Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, Spence, let's trip out. I'm afraid not every human is as smurfy as they should be, Sachi. My marshmallows. Just so little of strawberry flavored marshmallows. My gosh, the big goo. Big deal. New crunchy ghosts in monster cereals. I failed again. How about these, Master? Hi there. My name is Teddy Ruxpin. How are you today? Fine. Well then. I would like to Teddy tell you Ruxpin. It's alive. The world's first animated storytelling bear. It's alive. Now available at stores everywhere. It's alive. <laughs> All right. Here we are again. We have Josh from Trashed Ambulance, the guitar player, vocalist. Welcome, my friend. Pleasure to have you. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Of course. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on. And Sunshine, our sister from another mister, is back. Haven't yeah. seen her in a minute. I've been am I? And, oh. and and today, today, like I know it's only Thursday. It's still not officially our birthday, but we're entering our third year of podcasting. So we're having a pizza party. Hey. Everybody. Everybody loves doing that? Bill, Billy's eating a whole whole fucking pie. Because <laughs> he already he already got his pizza cutter because he, he bought a house. I think you just so, started the trend. Yeah. <laughs> Every, so everybody do what Billy's doing. Among Us hasn't done the same. <laughs> do, do what Billy's doing, everybody. Add three pizza <laughs> uncut when you buy it from the Pizza Hut or wherever you get pizza. <laughs> Mine, mine is from Baroni's, Charleston, South Carolina. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Oven. Pizza I'm on right Thank now. you, oven. Yep, yep. And these guys all went and bought stuff from the store. So, yeah. <laughs> Mine's from Pizza Factory, and it's cauliflower <laughs> crust. Mine is from a Pizza Factory, the fine folks at DiGiorno. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where mine's from. Hey, we might get sued for that. <laughs> or sponsored. They might be Pantera fans. Or sponsored. Or sponsored. Yeah. We don't, we don't have any sponsors yet. Mine's upstairs. Official. I, I was full, so I didn't want to bring it down. Sorry. <laughs> oh, you're perfect. You had pizza. <laughs> right that's thing. all that matters. I did have pizza. <laughs> Accidentally <laughs> twice today. <laughs> oh no! Accidentally. Accidentally, <laughs> I had the greatest food ever. Produced. Accidental. <laughs> it just looks All so right. good on that menu. I couldn't resist. Somebody was like, add cheese and oh, meat, yeah. potato sauce and put it on bread. <laughs> it's the fucking greatest food in the world. It really is. Like, there, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, there's a like steak, obviously, stands alone, except you could add steak to a pizza and it'll make the pizza better. 
You know what I mean? Like pizza is it's like if not the top ten, definitely, definitely up there, right? Like it may not be the top ten greatest foods in the world, but it's it's definitely like scratching, like right behind. <laughs> <laughs> It, 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 um, position, we ain't doing our job for me so for me like i've always found myself akin to like garfield because i really 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 love lasagna all right yeah, like more than any human, human, more than any human really should <laughs> like, like i put italians to shame with my love of lasagna cheese meat so meat. Good stuff. Fucking a, <laughs> and like you can get that with any noodle combination, but there's something about well, lasagna noodle. You get the sheet, then you put these little curds in it, and it's just like I don't know why, but it's like so two different types of cheese, multiple types of meat as well. This is already off topic. Jesus Christ, we're not even fucking started. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see the lasagna, right, right, leave it in the comments here. below. Yeah, no, seriously, if you want a lasagna show? I've got a recipe. You guys ask me. I came through it on my own. I was poor. It's fucking. <laughs> All right. So the reason we're here is Josh and his man trash ambulance. You guys, I was listening to you guys on my walk home from work earlier this afternoon, and you guys, I caught a very very strong like no effects vibe from you, like mid 90s no effects specifically and that's not putting you down in any way i love that stuff I'm like i'm assuming that's a main influence yeah yeah definitely that yeah that fat record style 90s punk yeah. rock for sure is what i grew up on and somehow never really outgrew it yeah i feel that i feel that i'm still <laughs> I've gotten a little less nasally, but I used to be very fat Mikey in the, in the earlier songs, which you may have. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, know, I definitely noticed that. I was like, hey, whoa. I was like, but it's not, that's not fat Mike, but it sounds just like him. It's like a Ben yeah, Weasel yeah. fat Mike hybrid. Yeah. yeah. You get oh, trapped yeah, yeah, I dig it. It. <laughs> If you listen to Booga to Booga to Booga and then compare it to anything after that, there's a completely different vocal styling there. Right. Yeah. Not in a bad way. I mean, they were all good. Like Wiggle sounds to me just as good as Booga Booga Booga, except yeah. like, the first one, the thing that introduced us to Screeching Weasel, definitely there was a different sound than everything that came after it. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love early Screeching Weasel too, but Emo was one of my favorite albums from them. Ooh, Dark Horse. Yeah. Don't hear that that often. <laughs> no, no, come come with it, Craig. It's fine. You did right. <laughs> is every night on that album? Every night? Is that yep. the hit song off that album? Last night. Yeah. Or last night? Yeah, last night. Yeah, I don't care. I love that album. But like I think that holds more like nostalgia for me because like, you know, I'd be hanging out with friends and with my exes and shit and we'd be listening right. to that. And it was always that album. So yeah. Sweet. Which one was the one that had cool kids on it? It's the Bark Like a Dog or All right, Bark Like a dog. dog. That's the last time that I bought a Screeching Weasel album. It was still on cassette when I got it. Oh wow. Yeah. No, sh shut up. I'm young. <laughs> 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 Seriously, it was one of the it was one of the last cassettes that I bought. It was Screeching Weasel. It was done specifically because it was a relatively new. I mean, there was a uh, Wiggle, there was uh Boogada Boogada, there was Wiggle, and then there was my brain hurts. Thank you. Yeah, and my then, yeah, yes, no. Okay, so, and then, uh, well, same thing because you go back to the queers, right? So you had love songs for the retarded, right? Yeah. Probably the thing that introduced the majority of us to the queers because it was just that huge of an album. Mm -hmm. ah, there it is. <laughs> uh, there was another one. Signed, signed by Joe Queer himself. Oh, nice. Damn, I'm surprised, dude. He's a cool fucking dude. Yeah, he is. Like, he is dude, cool Joe, Joe is amazing. He just wants somebody to help him with the fucking merch table and to hang out with for a minute after a yeah. show. He's a good guy. Yep. Yeah. Joe is a great person. Anyway, continue. Sorry. Oh, no. So, so, so the whole thing with like getting I think into I put us into a center shot with my ego. It was getting introduced to that style of punk rock. 
I, I ended up with the queers and I ended up with Screeching Weasel at the same time, right? And so it was Love Songs for the Retarded and it yeah. was Booga Booga. After that, I pursued further along the Screeching Weasel stuff until I ended up going back and picking up a queers album that had a, uh, the the one that about Ben Weasel being an asshole. Yeah. Mm. It left me slightly confused, which has nothing to do, by the way, with 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 trashed amulets. Sorry, <laughs> this, this this happens. We leave people confused too. Don't worry. Oh, it's good. That, fine. <laughs> oh, is this hey, supposed to be music? Wait. What the fuck is this? <laughs> While I'm still sober enough to ask a question and retain the answer, trashed ambulance. Where did the name come from? Oh, this question, eh? <laughs> Everyone's always disappointed. <laughs> he, did, he, did, he did the thing. He did the, he did the thing. I thought this was going to be a unique show. I'm going to keep track of how many as we hear. <laughs> uh, sorry. I'm, we I'm never said Canadian. unique. We said weird. <laughs> I did another one. He said sorry. <laughs> no, I think we actually did. I'm very Canadian. <laughs> I will apologize all and right, say hey, all right. A lot. <laughs> probably bring up poutine. Oh, no. No, everybody <laughs> should. Everybody should until the whole world understands it. <laughs> I, I love poutine. We took potatoes and added shit. You fucking love talking shit. The name. I gotta try to think what I'm gonna say this time because I just like fucking with people about it. Um, oh, my, favorite, uh, my, <laughs> my favorite album of all time was Trash by Lagwagon, and ambulances go fast, so I just combine them together. <laughs> I'm willing to accept you know what? The answer. It was, it was, a, it was a great that. name for SEO until there was all those riots in London and people were actually trashing ambulances, and all of a sudden that's all you get when you type in the name. It was like, come on, like it happened <laughs> overnight, and all of a sudden you couldn't find us anymore. You need to make a promo. If you like ambulances, you'll love. <laughs> it's hard to come up with names, though. In all honesty, in the fucking oh, dude, coming up with a band name is the fucking worst. Yeah, like we I've started in 2014, to... and all the names you've taken by then, right? What are you supposed to do right. I have I one do, name uh... that I'm not going to say here because I don't want anybody to steal. That's right. There's already five bands. One of them's almost signed. Yeah, but this one is not a band. I've looked into it. This one is genius, and I'm going to do it. I swear to God. And you guys will relish in it. <laughs> You'll reap all the rewards. Huh? You got, uh, Dennis Leary, right? Everybody here? Yeah. Okay, so his... Uh, I don't even want to call it an autobiography. I know there was a ghostwriter involved. But his uh, he, he wrote a book in which he literally every chapter names off like five different things and he's like dibs on the band name after every fucking one of them <laughs> every chapter and it's like fucking 20 chapters long right five yeah. per chapter so we're talking about a hundred fucking band names and they're all fucking great they're all good like i read that shit and i was like oh shit that is a good band name <laughs> <laughs> elbow skin fucking great band name. <laughs> how is that a good band name how has no one thought of that except for somebody did weenus you know, like it is it's a thing. I don't understand. There's something, like me, man. They know what the fuck they're doing. Him in particular. Seriously, go. Uh, this is not a advertisement for Dennis Leary. However, <laughs> is he the guy with that with that "I'm an asshole" song? Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Like I knew he was yes. an actor, but it, I was trying to. Oh, think he was, was an actor by then, but he was also like he got his kick off on fucking MTV early, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, that was his whole thing was basically like appealing to Cindy Crawford for being pretty. That that yeah. was his whole deal on MTV. Right. Yeah. He managed to turn that into a career, which by the way, way to go that guy. I yeah, know. fucking A. He right? turned that into starring on a fucking firefighter show on well, FX. I mean, my suspicion is that people have done more with less, but he did it really well. Like he became a uh, cultural he's actually icon entertaining. Kind of icon. Yeah. He's actually entertaining. Yeah, was like, he, wasn't he a dad in like a classic '90s movie too, or something? Yes, actually, I think so. He was the bad guy in the ref. Yeah, uh, not not actually a bad guy, but he was the criminal in the ref. He was the yeah. guy that uh, was robbing the family. He, he, no, he was um, Small's stepdad in Sandlot. That's what it was. Yeah. Yes. He was. He was yes. You're right. Yes, yes absolutely. You're killing me. Yeah. <laughs> You're killing me, Small. Yeah, fucking <laughs> Sam. Uh, he was the enforcer in Suicide Kings, which I don't know, like that. Mm -hmm. a fucking yeah. great movie. Uh, unexpected oh. movie, too, by the way. 
I uh, didn't like I ended up renting that because a guy at Blockbuster was like, you're going to love it. Get it. And I did. You're just dating yourself. I bought a tape. I went to Blockbuster. <laughs> I, 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 we're all, we're we're all 30 something. Like the time. I know I'm 38. I realized, I'm 30 much, older, no, much older. I realized much earlier than today how old I actually am by comparison to the different conversations I have with everybody on here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, Jason, Jason's the granddad. Didn't mean to be, but it fucking happened. <laughs> <laughs> then we got, and Billy's our baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> ba baby Billy Bones. <laughs> baby Billy Bones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. Baby Billy. Hey, listen, as somebody as somebody who's used to being a baby, it's nice to nice to pawn it off on somebody else for a change. But <laughs> also, this place, like it was a weird thing. It's a weird thing to suddenly just not be the right age. Like you're yeah, right. Right. this way your whole life, and then all of a sudden you're like, nah, not you anymore. No, yeah. no, man. no yeah, offense, nah. to you, baby Billy. But... You're doing great. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> all this new no, no, thing's pretty frightening, right. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, like, I don't even know what the fuck these kids are saying. <laughs> I know. Oh, my teenager no, tries not to English, guys. I'm like, the fuck are you saying to me right now? Like, <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Speak English, child, please. When when a child calls me bro, you bro. know how hard it is not to kick that thing. Yeah, no, no, it's no. Not even bro. Oh, because it's not even bro. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah, it's not even bro. It's bruh. bruh. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. These little assholes here. In Charleston, South Carolina, these little fucking dickheads. Okay, let me tell you about these little bastards. All right, tell me how you really feel about it. These sons of bitches, they don't say they'll say bruh, but they don't say bruh when you're talking to their parents and their uncles and like adults who have authority over them. They say bro, and I'm like, oh, you little fuck boy. <laughs> you like, feel that it's a, you feel that it's an intentional use. Of a disrespectful way to refer to somebody. Exactly. Now that I so, know that I'm talking like, about neighbors' kids, it's like <laughs> when you call. Like, okay, you know why? You know why I hate it? Because when I was a kid, I did the same thing to my mom. I go, dude. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude. I started know, using George the language against her. She'll walk in. And I'm like, oh my god, you're so slay, and she gets so <laughs> pissed off at me. <laughs> Oh, that's fucking. Oh, that's weird. on fleek. Do the kids yeah. say on fleek anymore? Is no, that it's thing? slay. I don't think so. Okay. No, no, no. Oh, fleek on slay. fleek died fucking eight years ago. Okay, cool. See, <laughs> I'm not completely out of the loop. I was never I'll in it like, to begin with. OMG, LOL, LOL. She's like, no, no. fucking stop, mom. <laughs> yo, 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 no, 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 no. Sunshine, your kids need to understand. We were there when that book was written. OMG, LOL. <laughs> I don't, AOL. Right. <laughs> I told I told about my AOL, AOL name. <laughs> we we were talking, we were saying that shit on AIM. Yeah. Yeah. Or AIM, <laughs> whatever it is. I had Yahoo chats. AOL. Yeah, really and why it was just like called AIM, ASL. I don't understand. Yeah, right. So, we, we didn't have that up ASL. north. So we, we, didn't we, didn't have have we didn't have America online because we're not Americans. Did you have Canadian online? It's right, so a Canadian well, yeah. online. <laughs> yeah. I am so him like we what? just all shared the same <laughs> internet because because we're backwards folks up <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, we just got it last back. week actually it was a good timing <laughs> because of all the snow you're behind <laughs> you guys make it to the southeast if you make your way down to georgia i'm going to show you what backwoods looks like <laughs> i know you think you know you think you know because it's not the same like backwoods canada and backwoods fucking america are two different things yep. backwoods canada still knows how to resolve its issues <laughs> Without yeah. bringing guns into it, yeah, that's because yeah. they're yeah. backwoods Americans because they're cousins. I'm just kidding. Oh, no, literally, it's family, <laughs> and you cannot let family get away with disrespect. <laughs> I got them. I've been house. waiting for James to laugh that hard. <laughs> the next fucking barbecue, nobody's gonna be happy with that shit. You gotta kill somebody now. <laughs> yeah. I don't know your fucking favorite kid is not showing up. <laughs> for some reason. For some reason, when I was a kid, we had uh, like the Ted Turner station. It was called PBS back then. I don't know what it's yeah. called now. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I grew up watching, you know, Atlanta Braves baseball, like Chipper Jones, all those dudes, whatever. Like they were always on. Interesting. TV. <laughs> all right. Still didn't Crazy. cheer for them, but 
Like straight out of the the hell no, no. What's that? I'm fucking. What'd you say, Jason? I was straight out of Atlanta. So if you were watching the, the, mm-hmm. the you know, any of the Turner Broadcasting shit, you were literally watching uh, what for us at the time, I guess, because I mean, you're you're how old now? Thirty eight. Roundabout. Yeah. So okay, you, you were old enough Roundabout. to have experienced the end of the Braves in Atlanta. Like that, that's yeah. what it was. It was their last real decade here. Uh, and if that was a thing that you were watching, then you, you experienced Atlanta on the decline from where we were, which is a weird way to put it. But it was like, I mean, like the Masquerade, one of our local venues where you guys more than likely would have ended up fucking playing in a heartbeat. You guys, like, if you guys did a, a tour in our country, zero doubt when you made it to Atlanta, you would have ended up at the Masquerade. You would have ended up on a bill. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, no, like you would have been there with with ten foot pole. You would have been there with fucking, uh, you know, God bless, no effects if they'd still been fucking playing at the time. Whatever the case, <laughs> been, like you guys would have ended up there with a very large national act. Oh. But that that venue doesn't exist anymore. It's fucking gone. Like there's that's there's sad no because I love the Mass Parade. Well, yeah, it was Mass Parade was a great. Thing. But it's there is there's still a version of it. It, it does exist. It's just not what it once was. Like it used to be the place. Right. That you I, I saw a fucking Citizen Fish play there like three fucking times. You know what I mean? I saw Bad Religion right. two or three times there. I saw fucking Good Riddance uh, at least twice there, and then once at the fucking rec room because they got they thought that was too big of a venue, which was <laughs> it, like it wasn't. It wasn't. It had a fucking dance <laughs> like you were playing. Didn't make it a big venue. It just so what was the big punk band to come out of Atlanta? then because i'm trying to rack my brain and i can't think of any off, off the top well, of my head. well that's the whole thing man there's not a lot like you i can name some bands that you might know you might know the loose screws you might know the antagonizers but that's the thing these guys were not ever any bigger than the southeast mm-hmm. and it wasn't yeah. for lack of trying like they did try and they actually got pushed pretty hard they just never picked up national interest uh mm-hmm. it, it's not to say that they didn't end up playing in a lot of places they did it was just an issue that they were not. Let's visit one of the bigger bands I can name out of the Southeast would be the Loose Screws. And they, to me, were just a solid punk rock fucking thing, right? But on a national stage, they would have been referred to as street punk. Uh, street yeah. punk would not get picked up by some of the larger, uh, the larger record labels. This is not to say that they right. weren't good. They were. It just wasn't the right sound. It was the wrong time and the wrong sound. It wasn't really their like look, anyways. It's, it, nobody really wanted to like, you know what I mean. There wasn't an empire that was street punk, anyways. They didn't really care about all that. Well, no, they no, they didn't. Except for some of the bands did. Like if you got into somebody like, all right, so you take Tilt for example, right? Yeah. Uh, lead singer or Tilt. It, I mean, originally on on was it Epic or Fat? They definitely put stuff out on Fat. Yeah. yeah, so they did. All right, so let's say Fat. And then she ends up splitting, uh, Cinder Block ends up splitting and forming Retching Red, right? Retching Red was a street punk, almost oi sounding fucking punk band, right? Mm. It was done because she felt that the other one was too commercial. Was it? I don't know. I know I love fucking Tilt. I loved Tilt. Yeah. I also liked Retching Red. And it was done to try and get away from what she thought was a commercialized sound. Yeah. Right? I don't know. It's a it's a weird. I don't know. They, the casualties kind of broke that barrier. Like they they ripped that veil right off because they play with anybody. Yeah, they didn't give a shit. Like you set yeah. them up with a show and give them a place to fucking stay, and they will show up. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, they will. Great band for but, that. Uh, exactly. Also, great guys. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, Josh, when did Trash Ambulance? I just want to circle back. <laughs> oh, no, please. All the Christ gives Focus. Focus. <laughs> Jason's, like, shut, Jason's like, shut me the fuck up. Please. That's seven. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, roundabouts, when did you guys decide, like, when did Trash, Trash Ambulance decide to become one, so to speak? Like, when did the band begin? Yeah, like round, roundabout. Original incarnation, not current. How, how long? Oh yeah. So, when 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 did the idea first spawn? I would say. So, kind of funny. The 
guy who's playing bass for us now, Ozone. He was he him and I were in another band called Chimp Change, and he played drums in that band. Mm. And then he moved to Dubai, and that was the end of that band. So <laughs> I kind of wasn't doing anything for a few months, and then me and the other guitar player at the time that from Chimp Change decided, oh, let's just start something new. Did the old? Do you guys have Kijiji down there? Like the it's like Craigslist. I don't know. It's this Kijiji an American thing is like just yeah. Canadian. <laughs> okay. Uh, Craigslist. It's called Kijiji up here. <laughs> I don't think anyone uses Craigslist. Well, nobody really uses Kijiji anymore either, but it's it's not important. So we found a drummer <laughs> and then we, we went through a few different members and then I think about three years ago, it was kind of like right when COVID was kind of kicking in, we got a new drummer. Actually, it might have been like right at that time. And then I made this guy. He's played everything in the band. He plays. He's played drums, guitar originally when he moved back from Dubai, and then, yeah, he was gonna play, keep playing drums. And then I found this other dude. I'm like, you have, have you ever played bass? He's like, no. I'm like, well, you are now. So I just made him play bass because <laughs> I knew he had this other guy that was really good at drums. So like, yeah. So from the initial kickoff, like your your current lineup still consists of two of the original members. Um. Well, because it was kind of I started it with couple other guys and one guy pretty much as soon as we started it the, like the guitar player from the last band just he was kind of going into the next stage of his life he's starting right. to have kids and stuff and he just he didn't really want to jam anymore and just wasn't a scene he didn't want to hang out in stinky punk clubs anymore on, on his weekends so <laughs> can't right. blame him and then another guy that i don't know he just got started hitting the, the straw a little bit hard and i was like ah you go do that <laughs> play yeah. music and then the drummer that we had, he he was in it up until recently, but he moved. He just moved away. There was no bad blood or anything. He just sold his house and said, "I'm moving to BC, which is where all the potheads hang out in Canada." <laughs> <laughs> he went there, and then so a lot of opportunities, man. Yeah. So the guy always on us talking about he's playing bass now. He did join, so I guess technically he was not officially the other guitar player, but he came like probably four or five months in to our like when we moved back into our uh whatever you want to call it inception and then he was kind of living about an hour away so it was kind of a pain for him to come down and practice and stuff so he kind of walked away the whole time i was in another band with him but we just didn't really practice but he just played shows it's kind of hilarious but <laughs> and then eventually yeah he just when the guy moved away i'm like you want to come play drums and he just hopped on and yeah and then so a lot of this and you did I mean, it, uh, not to not to say it's all been you. It's, I'm just saying it's like you've been the constant kind of running with it, replacing parts as they fall off. Yeah, like I never wanted to ever do that. Like the first couple bands I was in, if somebody quit, I'm like, oh, we gotta end it. Like, gotta keep the integrity of the band. <laughs> and I was like thinking, like, what what integrity? And you know, you, once you get older, you don't really have time to start from scratch, right? Yeah. And like you look yeah. at. You know, look at freaking all, right? Great band. Mm. They're still in the shadow of the descendants. Doesn't mm. matter, right? So it's like always you will put, be. You can put a huge <laughs> thing. These are the guys from the descendants to the different singer, and people still won't clue in or you know, yeah. so it's like <laughs> and I did have a tiny following with this band. So I'm like, well, it was actually that ozone I was talking about. He was like, Well, don't like keep this one going, man. I'm like, why would you start something new? You was no one's gonna fucking yeah. you're starting from scratch again because I'm not a famous guy, so I can't just go <laughs> spy. And it doesn't even work for big big punk rockers, right? Like obviously it works a little bit better than what it would for me, but What's so a... that's the thing. Like I don't I don't know. I just I wrote most of the songs anyways. I discontinued the songs that I didn't write and the other guys sung and mm -hmm. I just I don't that's know. Fair. Well you guys have I mean you guys have played with some pretty large uh bands. Like I mean, like any like if you're a if you're into the shit at all, you fucking recognize it. You may not know them, but you do recognize the name. You know, like that's so. I mean, it's, it's saying that it's a relatively small thing. That's not quite right. I mean, you guys, you guys are doing something up there. We're trying. Yeah, yeah. We kind of. Well, like I mentioned offline, like we live in Red Deer, which is like a hundred thousand people, kind of a little bit rednecky town. <laughs> and then, like an hour north, you got Edmonton. Which is like over a million yeah, people, and then an hour south down the main highway, it's called Calgary, and there's a million people yeah. there. So I've seen Scott Pilgrim. 
<laughs> yeah. That's in hard- Toronto, Billy. Don't be me. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever seen our <laughs> hardcore logo, there, Jason? I'd be up no, out. but I want to now. God damn it's it. A- <laughs> yeah, it's a great movie about a, a punk band like reuniting and then I don't know. It oh goes, shit. It goes poorly, but they do a tour through like all these like small prairie cities in Canada. It's it's mm. it's a super cool. Should you get bored movie. and you watch a silly horror movie, go look up Uncle Packer. <laughs> Uncle Horrible, Pecker. Name. Horrible name, but it's fucking hilarious. It's called Uncle Pecker. It's a punk band trying to tour with a ghoul for a roadie. Oh my god. <laughs> so, awesome. You know what I'm doing tonight? Yeah, no, seriously, yep. I'm a little awesome. bit nervous to look up Uncle Pecker, though, in Google. Yeah, no. <laughs> you send me a link, and I'm trusting you. I'm going to do that, but I'll also say after. Fuck. <laughs> you can do a you can do a double feature. You can do Uncle Pecker followed by uh, Jason's uh, yeah. lesbian <laughs> vampire hunter. <laughs> like a great night. An issue, it? <laughs> I look. The worst thing you're gonna get with lesbian vampire killers is some kind of weird fucking Andy Warhol shit. You know, <laughs> like, that's the worst thing you're gonna get. Maybe a bad brains fucking reference, but you're not gonna get anything. <laughs> so bad you can't <laughs> for the rest of the movies though yeah no keep safe search on <laughs> search, search. i'm sorry i apologize <laughs> <laughs> they're great movies but you're not gonna fucking find them you're not going to i'll Uncle try Pecker one more time <laughs> what, what i was saying <laughs> Before the, the Uncle Pecker stuff. <laughs> yeah. is that bands are, there's a guy here or in Edmonton that knows all like the big punk bands. Actually a tour manager for Good Riddance, I believe. So he has relationships with all these skate punk bands and he brings them up for like little mini tours through where I live. Mm. And for a long time they they would just it's always a joke that you know they people just cruise right through our town because it's just stop, take a piss. And there's a place called the Donut Mill. People stop and get donuts <laughs> and take a piss and grab a coffee. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. but they they started stopping and they're like oh who should we get to as a local opener and like well we're like the only skate punk band around so the first couple mm-hmm. times they were like bringing other bands in and we kind of like hey we're here and yeah they actually put us on the bills yeah so yeah so we got the open for I'm trying to think face to face came through uh mad caddies just came through oh, yeah. um lag, lag wagon which was huge for us yeah um who else is coming through good riddance and i don't know I don't know if you guys know S- SNFU from. Oh, absolutely. Like, oh, yeah. American we Canadian love that. Band. Very much so. <laughs> I, I love to hear that. Great, yeah, they're, great, they're, great. Especially in Western Canada, they were absolutely beloved. So, yeah. Like it was kind of like the tail end. It was p- basically Chai Pig being drug around by some jobbers you know, at the end, but it's still yeah. him up there singing all the classics. So, it was, we got to open for them for a few times. Like the Twins uh, weren't in it anymore or anything, but it was still, still I, cool. I, I, I got to hear those songs. I got to ask this question only because I know they're from your area, but how many times have you guys played with Belvedere? Okay. So we just played with them with, uh, with, uh, Mad Caddies. And before that, oh, nice. I think that was the fourth time we got to play with them. They're actually on the same label as us, which is weird. <laughs> oh, they, nice. Yeah. That's, that's fucking, that's pretty badass, dude. We got on on ground level with this thousand islands records. Okay. to give them a shot. Uh-huh. And, uh, Oh yeah, love those guys. Yeah, they just they just kind of exploded. Like they ended up they signed a ten foot pole when they did their comeback mm-hmm. album there, and then that kind of got them yeah. on everyone's radar. And now they're yeah they're putting out tons of cool stuff. Like much the same did an album with them. And yeah, Belvedere was a big one. They yeah, put out the... Bel- Belvedere, I've been listening to those guys for a long time. They were on it actually. Uh, there's an old label from uh, Central PA back in the day called the jumpstart records oh, okay. uh, a friend of mine used to run it but uh belvedere d- donated i guess they let them have a song for a sampler cd like a compilation disc that's when i first heard about them and i was like okay these guys are good i need more of this <laughs> you know and our buddy matt who i was telling you about earlier he uh actually knows steve from belvedere pretty well so Oh, yeah. He knows that a lot brought of people. Me back around to listen. Yeah, He's a very but that brought player. me back around to listening to Belvedere, and I was okay. These guys are a lot better than I remember. 
yeah, that's they're... like it's just awesome to like know that you guys share a label with those guys. The... So like the original lineup was the four guys, and then mm-hmm. when they reunited like years later, I think the original drummer just wasn't available to do what they wanted or something. So the the guy Casey Lewis that they got drumming from now actually produced our last full length album. Like awesome. went to his his studio and he put it is like magic into it and yeah he's a oh, yeah. he's a great guy K- casey lewis echo bay studio so another shout out, <laughs> shout out. Sure, uh, sure. speaking about that though i did have a question on uh hold on a second future considerations right yep. so that that real i like i was going through youtube on it uh and listening to the songs was that actually the way the drum set sounded or was it was it sound replaced uh i think it's minimal samples like i'm sure you use some but like Right, or Riley. Or well, I mean, I'm not, it's, it wouldn't be bad either way because it sounds fucking great. It sounds really good. Like somebody knew what they were doing when they mixed that shit down. I'm just curious as to how much of it was the actual like drum set as it was, and how much of it was. Uh, uh, as, as as far as all the the sampling stuff goes, I couldn't tell you that because I don't know much about drums to begin with. But um, <laughs> I know uh, he didn't. You can tell because he records a lot of bands around here and you can tell when it's like heavily doctored drums. Like it just has that. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you, ex- that's the thing though. I couldn't robot. Tell. Yeah. So that's that's, what, like, it was mixed very well. The sound, the levels, everything in that fucking album sounds really. Oh, thank you very much. Well, it looks like a hard thing to pull off. Like there's always something that suffers except that doesn't. Yeah. He's sounds good. Like Riley, he's a really good, well, he's a good drummer, but he's an excellent studio drummer. Like just bang on to the click and he, Right. He hits hard, so the the engineers love him because he hit, hits that snare so hard, right? Like <laughs> sometimes, got drummers a little wimpy in there, right? And <laughs> that's good, yeah. But yeah, so yeah, that thanks. That means a lot that you think it sounds okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm one random dude. Well, it, to be fair though, if I think it does, there's a shitload of other people that have heard it that think the same thing. Oh, I mean, yeah. it really does. We've sold dozens of records. Across the world, so <laughs> yeah, <I> was, <laughs> that that was adds up. <laughs> but, right, so, so coming from somebody who has recorded and who has mixed, what I'm trying to say is, from my standpoint, the entire thing sounds really good. And because I cannot tell the drums, you can always tell. You can yeah. always fucking tell. I cannot tell on that album. Somebody mm-hmm. mixed it really fucking well. Well, I remember much to our chagrin at the time because you know time is money in the studio. Always. You were like he just like he kept saying, "Oh, I'm not, I'm just, I'm not taking any shortcuts, guys. I'm just so that to me leads me to believe that it was, you know, natural sounds that he just you know beefed yeah. up with samples here and there as yeah. as he needed. But like he wasn't copying and pasting. Oh, let's put this fit. like I right, didn't right. need to do that. Our drummer did a great job. So well, that became a whole thing. Like that was a thing in the late '90s, early 2000s. It happened on every album, mm-hmm. every fucking album. Like I mean, if you got a a trio. Listen to Atreyu, right? Huh. Atreyu, good band, fucking great band. They, there was a lot of classic songs that people fucking probably enjoy from them, but their drummer was their singer, which means even if they were recording and that dude was spot on with a fucking eight ball of meth hanging out next to him, <laughs> there is no way he was fucking that consistent all the way through. <laughs> They're just mm-hmm. isn't. I remember. If it the- makes you feel any better, he's no longer the drummer. He's just the singer now. Good because he shouldn't have been the drums. Fucking more power to you. I mean, seriously, like the guy, like Snuff, for example, drummer and singer. I've seen him live. He does it. He does it well. But Atreyu, that shit was like basically like emo hardcore. Mm. It required a lot of effort. Like, and he wasn't in that good a shape. There's no way that that guy was that consistent. So the point of the matter is a lot of the sounds we got used to, it was all pro tools. It was all fucking cakewalk mixing right. matching shit. Right. You know, you, talking about drummers and singers, one who I feel doesn't get enough credit, Fred LeBlanc, Cowboy Mouth. Really? Anybody? Mm-hmm. Yes. No, I know Cowboy Mouth. I'm just surprised. Yeah. I had no idea. I can't they're, remember. Their singer, their uh... singer is the drummer, Fred, Fred LeBlanc. 
Yeah, the yeah. modern one of the best fucking scene. drummers. Was wasn't he yeah. Joey on Friends? Yeah. yeah. Yes, he was. No, that's Matt. <laughs> Matt, <laughs> Matt. That's Matt LeBlanc. Oh. <laughs> I never watched the show, so I knew it was a LeBlanc. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, Fred from Cowboy Mouth. He's fucking seriously one of the best drummers I've ever seen, and he's also one of the best frontmen I've ever seen. Like a drummer as a frontman is odd to begin with, but he if, can do it. Well, there's that band from uh, Quebec City. If you like Belvedere, they're called Mute. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Mute. Oh, Mute? yes, absolutely. Yeah, oh, yeah. Their yeah, singer yeah. is a, is the drummer as well. I normally okay, don't like that aesthetic. That. This it just it's weird for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they they do well. <laughs> they're good buddies right. over there for sure. <laughs> They've toured together. Oh, I'm pretty yeah. sure. This is a weird. I don't branch. think I've ever like dug deep in the mute, but I've definitely heard a song. I haven't before. either, really. But I've just. Seen Seen them a few times. I have friends who are friends with them, type of deal. And I know that the yeah. drummer is the singer. <laughs> <laughs> it was a it was a topical always, thing for me to bring up. I've always it's found that relevant. to be like, right, for <laughs> sure. But I've always found that to be like a yeah, very odd, but yet excellent skill to have. Like if you can yeah. sing while still maintaining the rhythm of the song. Then you're doing something well, like with mu- with multiple append- appendages, not when just we were, like uh, two hands and guitar. But. When we when we were demoing out this new album, I had a bunch of ideas, and I sent one over to the guys. And our drummer was like, "Oh, can I take this one? Like, I have an idea." So I'm like, "Yeah, go ahead." And he wrote it. And the song's called "Blip on the Radar." It's probably one of our most yeah, I'm doing great it. song. And, I was uh, listening to it earlier. It's a great song. Oh, thank you. And uh, <laughs> and then like as people really liked it, we used it as the first single and everything. And he's just like, I'm like, you realize now we got to play this live. He's like, I don't fucking do that. I'm like, well, if you, had, you shouldn't have wrote a song. You, like you signed up. <laughs> and like, sure I'd be. Yeah, he was just like <laughs> pulling teeth every time. He's like, do I have to play it? I'm like, you're fucking playing it. <laughs> so, the shitty part about it is we all got to start it together. So I can't even just start playing the riff and he's stuck. Right, it's, it's he has a, to really. He has to agree. You got to do a count off, and then you gotta... <laughs> oh, but now he figured it out. That, that... He likes it now. Right. Oh, for sure. Oh, you, once you find your groove, that's yeah, you'd be fine. You'd be able to play any of the songs. We're not exactly the slowest band. Like we're not the <laughs> fastest band. We're oh, not the no. slowest band. So. <laughs> no, nah. no, you're not the fastest, but you're damn sure not the slowest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's you're, you're quite, the, quite fastest, the opposite of both. The fastest band I believe is Gang Green. That was their goal. They had an entire <laughs> album dedicated to the fact that their only goal was to be the fastest band on earth. <laughs> oh shit! It's actually it's really funny. There's a like there's an old cassette that had a timeline for Gang Green, right? It was their multi-year plan. And somewhere around 1986, they wanted to be the fastest band on Earth. <laughs> that was their only fucking thing, to be the fastest band alive. They might have succeeded. I don't fucking know. I just know that I can <laughs> They did try. It well, was the one that had the fucking, I, the, the fucking hockey logo on the cover. And it was a combination oh, of Monkey for You and another album. And they released new shit on top of that. It had this whole timeline. And at the end of the timeline, it was like fastest band on earth. Bam. And like it was really like that's where it ended. Oh. See, for me, like I find like when I think fastest band on earth, I mean like their songs have a sheet of lyrics, but they're only like 10 seconds long. Ain't no cunt I'm looking at you. <laughs> I like it. Um, I, I love that band, but it's like, why? why? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, like, oh, they're like the oh. Howard Stern of music. Dude, what's that one record they did? It was like the 5,243 song EP. <laughs> it was only it was only like 20 minutes long, but there was like a fuck ton of songs <laughs> on it. They were all just like 10 I don't know, but long. they made fun of Chris Barnes, which was good for me. So oh, that, That's very easy to do. To be fair. <laughs> In the early 90s, there was a band out of Atlanta called the Oswalds. They had an album called Aim High. The cover of the album was uh, JFK getting his brains blown out. 
right? No, they were definitely they were definitely trying for something there. Yeah. All right. The there is they had a song on there called "The Government Is After Me for Tax Evasion." They have my number. They know where I live, and they are coming for me. That was the name of the song. <laughs> like it was a long song. The entire song was bam, checks in the mail, bam, over. <laughs> Great song. It is to this day. I mean, we're talking like thirty years down the goddamn line. I still think about that song, and I'm like, that, that was right somehow. Like, <laughs> that was right, but it was right. Well, we're not oh, that shit. fast. We're not that fast. Right, right. right. No, no, you guys actually have. Some actual substance, substance to your song. No, there's technical. Like, we try to. You also. <laughs> oh yeah, the guitar, the guitar work is fucking brilliant too. Like the riffage, that like, it just takes me back to my middle school days when I was like trying to figure out: am I the punk? Am I a metalhead? Am I an emo kid? What the fuck am I? <laughs> and, but I was just. Then I realized I'm everything. I'm just gonna listen to it all. Fuck it. Why? I was like, you skate punk <laughs> earlier. But it is yeah. it, it is solid fucking skate. It is solid skate punk, which is not like a. There's. I think there are some people that give shit to skate punk. Uh, maybe oh, definitely it depends on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you you think? It's like it's not right. There is not a band that we all know and love from any fucking genre of punk rock from seventy seven forward that doesn't fit the fucking bill. All of them. Yeah. Even like, well, like, what are you gonna be like? Well, I'm not a big skate punk. I like the political shit. Circle jerks. I like circle jerks. Yeah, fucking like skate punk. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> there is not anything you fucking like that doesn't apply here. It is. It, there is something to it. I mean, it's even uh, sub subhumans. Subhumans. You could argue actually kicked, uh, at least to me, kicked off the entire new school thing. Suddenly, you had to be talented to play punk rock. Yeah. You had to know how to play the instrument, right? So, like, that was a big fucking deal. I mean, what was the the most talented fucking UK seventy seven thing? Maybe the the fucking UK subs? Maybe. Yeah. I mean, like, what what could you name? I mean, other than that, you could drop crass and be like, "They owe us a living" as a seminal fucking song, but the rest is it. It was terrible. It was fucking horrible. Uh, you could right. go from there. You could go to the Kinks, but they were like a proto punk band. They didn't yeah. count wasn't a real thing the skate punk was actually where at least in my opinion where punk rock kicked off it's what it's a birth yeah. to the th to everything that we know like you listen to lag wagon you can think skate punk for it yeah yeah even like yeah. bringing in like the three-part harmonies and the vocals and stuff like mm. i know battle Legion wasn't mm. the first bands to do it they were one of the most well known. Yeah, people. yeah, they were the band that I first heard it. Where I was like, "Whoa, what is that?" Like, I didn't yeah. even, How I couldn't even compute what the fuck it was. I was like, "What is this?" Even though he was singing his own harmonies, like, yes. <laughs> like yeah. was, that was the funny part about that. Can you imagine that recording session? Where he's like, "Okay, everybody, if you, like, thank you for doing everything. I got an idea, though. Could you leave?" <laughs> <laughs> this does the monotone voice in the background for the entire. <laughs> 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 Joey Cape does that a lot too on Leg Wagon albums. Yeah. You know, I mean, he would have to. He's got a weird voice though. Like, Joey, he, he has a weird fucking voice. Like, it's not bad. It's not bad. Bad's the word. Like, that, I don't want to imply that, but it is unique. <laughs> like, if you're going to sing harmonies behind Lag Wagon, you kind of <laughs> have to sound like him. Yeah. <laughs> Which means someone is either going to have to punch you in the throat before you sing. <laughs> Or you're gonna have to fucking like eat a lot of chips or something. Something's gonna happen. <laughs> now, lag wagon's gonna want to beat us up too. No, no, no. I would like to point out that Hoss. Everybody fucking loves that album. Even if you don't look, fucking like the rest of the albums, you like Hoss. Hey. I just nope. uh, got a birthday present on the weekend. And <laughs> have you have any of those fucking Hoss? <laughs> awesome. Damn. I'm so happy. Yeah. It fucking happened. <laughs> that's twice in this episode we've done that I love that that's fucking great <laughs> I just think oh, it's, man. Is, is a thing that it, to me well that's alright so everybody knows what a skate punk band is but can you define what skate punk is you know what yeah. it's genre can you define what it is 
to me, like you said, like, you know, you had the seventies and everything, but I think anything after that is you can skate to, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. But you might as well be saying this, or in that case, <laughs> fucking keep their heads ringing. Fucking Dr. Dre. Yeah. Why do they escape on? A lot yeah, of people skate to Dr. Dre. Legitimately, if you showed up to any fucking, like, a literal, a legitimate skate thing, it could be anything, yeah. right? It could be mm-hmm. any yeah. type of music as long as it had, like, a hard fucking hit behind yeah. it. Yeah. It I don't depended what the people were into. Like, if, were they punks or were they hip hop kids? You know what I mean? Like, John knows, like but what, are you, what are they like? Right. Well, no, eventually it became that because they started hanging out together at the skate parks or the empty pools or That's whatever. That's what I mean. Like, even know? street punks had skateboards. And then suddenly you had Judgment right. Night. Yeah. <laughs> judgment Night. And then eventually you have, a, you have this melding of all these, you know, skater kids from different backgrounds, you know, yeah. different colors and all that stuff. And they're hanging out, listening to whatever the fuck they want to. And they just eventually, that's when the mixtapes start happening. Yeah. Tape traders and all that shit, you know what I mean? That's when everybody finds new music. Or they don't, they just, you know, skate and don't worry about the music. You know, it all depends on what people like. I mean, look at Suicidal Tendencies, you know, they were already hard, but when they came back with, like, Prime Cuts, it was insane. Yeah. Right. Figured out who was responsible for fucking Limp Biscuit. Yeah, <laughs> Fred Durst. Only Fred Durst. I don't know if I feel like <laughs> about this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about them the other. There were some good musicians in the band, but like the rap rock thing. Yeah. I I think we just we tracked it. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Only one band ever pulled it off. Yep. Anthrax. I was gonna say Blondie. <laughs> that was before all of that though. It was like well before hip hop was even really a thing. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time. Well. <laughs> <laughs> she did a song with Coolio for God's sakes on the comeback album that didn't come back. That was glorious. <laughs> what a fucking back album that didn't come back. <laughs> she tried. I mean, like, okay, so you had Blondie, which, God bless that, first off, the most coked up drummer in history. If if Sunday Girl, or not, wait, was Sunday, no, it wasn't Sunday Girl, it was, uh, it was some fucking Blondie song, the entire song is a drum fill. The whole fucking song. (laughs) Part of it's just a beat, it's all a drum fill. And it's a big fill. It's not simple. It's hard. It's really hard like that dude had to be on so much coke it was the 70s <laughs> storm lines while he was fucking playing and not skipping a beat which in and of itself is incredible way to go that guy but i mean if we're gonna get real we all know dewey cox created punk rock <laughs> it was a surprisingly good song as well <laughs> yeah it really is you know what else is a good song from that album fucking uh the midget song. <laughs> oh yeah, it's so good. <laughs> That's the song of my people. Leave us alone. <laughs> Every song on that thing was great. Like, what a great you know, listen. <laughs> so I I got to give a small shout out. No pun intended to uh, Micromania, their midget wrestling league that comes around here once twice a year, <laughs> and. Uh, it's, if you've never seen midget wrestling, go. It's fucking. I have just one do coming. It. Don't in the next couple go. weeks, and I'm going. I'm not, I'm go. Going. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm not going to go now that you told me to go, but I'm going to ask my friend. <laughs> Order people. Well, then my heart hurts for you. <laughs> but oh. they played that the uh, Dewey Cox midget song before the show, like officially kicked off, yeah. like, before bell rang. <laughs> but it was like there part of their introduction music to the event and i just started laughing because until that moment i completely forgot about that song <laughs> and this is like a month ago that i saw this event and for that to take me back to 2009 like that it made me so happy yeah like not only because of the nostalgia aspect because i'm watching midget wrestling right now i'm, I'm 
that I'm having a blast. <laughs> Is that Walk Hard movie you guys are talking about? Yeah. 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 Well, Dewey Cox Walk Hard. I don't think I've, I've, I haven't seen it since it first came out whenever you say 20, 2009. Oh, so. Man. So I need to right. revisit it, is what you're saying? Because I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, it. Yeah. I remember laughing, but I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad yeah, that's kind of how. The wrong kid died. The wrong <laughs> kid died. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> hey, oh, holy shit! You're on so much coke, by the way. I think it's. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. You got a phone on your fucking right now. Please, for the love of fuck, go to YouTube, look up Dreamy. The first hit you're going to get is Blondie. Just hit play. Hit play and give it 30 seconds. Watch the drummer. Yeah. Dude, like, you don't know what to be on fucking Coke that, I tell you. <laughs> like, are you curious about meth? This guy can show. It's- <laughs> the first clip comes from a dance show. That they're on, and he is, he is clearly fucking gacked out of his mind, <laughs> doing the mimicking shit and not touching things. He is gacked the fuck out of his mind. <laughs> I, I only put it out because I always thought it was really impressive that anybody could do that in their life. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, if you can maintain your faculties enough to do that. So, I thought his heart was going to blow up and blast out of his fucking eyeballs. <laughs> So just to recap, we got bisexual lesbian hunters or whatever the vampire hunters. We got Uncle Packer. What's this one? I got, I got a lot of research to do on saying up this call. I feel good about what I've done. <laughs> oh my god. We have gone fucking everywhere. With little tidbits of trash ambulance thrown in. <laughs> Billy, are you yeah, broken I again? I thought he passed out. Ate an entire we, pizza. We, it's, we, we broke, 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 broke Billy. Homer Simpson. We broke. We broke <laughs> Billy. <laughs> I'll, I'll be. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. Yeah. This is what we do here. You guys have any more questions about my dumb band? Or (laughs) (laughs) I do actually. Um, What do you guys got coming up? Like any shows or anything like that? Well, I guess you could talk about. I'll get to that in a second, but I guess in the last, so in like less than a calendar year, we did our first two first international tours. So the first time last year in May, we went down to Costa Rica for five days, Ooh. ripped up down there with our buddies from, I don't know if you guys know, I've ever heard of Punk Rock Mag, it's a, you see it online all the time, he's, Love guy Diego, he runs a, it's like, it's, he actually has like a, a zine that he will send you if you send him five bucks, Ooh. and then he also just does stuff online, pretty big yeah. Instagram account, and uh so yeah, he invited us down there and we're like, ah, oh, fuck it, let's do it. <laughs> we went down there and ended up doing three shows. Didn't really make any money, but it was an amazing time. <laughs> it was an experience. And last month we just did a six shows in a week in Japan. So that was pretty pretty fun as well. That's awesome. We get There's... around. <laughs> nobody nobody when... wants us. There's no demand for us. Damn, we well, when you when you said international, I thought you meant like you guys came to the States for like a, to- a run here and then like you're talking you're going to costa rica and japan like oh shit that's places a lot of bands only dream to play <laughs> that's a like that's like, a japan crowd i've always heard that they're a fucking like wonderful crowd to play for in yeah, where sorry in japan, japan? Yeah. i've always yeah. heard that a wonderful crowd to play for i, I don't know say now like such 30. a different uh well i've never played a show in america but like in canada it's they get pretty rowdy crowds, but Japan they're like yeah. so white Same. and they're like I'm trying to think like maybe fifteen percent like English, right? right? So like right. you'd be talking, like doing my banter, and it's like everyone just looking at you, like yeah, that was <laughs> what this dude's saying. That was what I, <laughs> I but, just heard that like you will get a good turnout in Japan. Well, every show had like six bands on it, so there was like 
30 people there right there <laughs> and then yeah, was, right we played pretty like small venues so they it was it was like full in the in the way that you know there's like 50 people there and you know a mm-hmm. handful of them had heard of us before or looked us up and decided they liked <laughs> a few songs but there's a few people that came up and like oh yeah i ordered your cd off of fucking thousand islands that's, awesome. that's cool that's sick man. yeah that's fucking but, badass yeah it was, it was awesome so many good bands like a lot of them well most of them didn't speak any english or if they did yeah. they were like you try to talk to them after and they they don't really know <laughs> it's kind of just yeah. like phonetically singing english <laughs> <laughs> right but uh shout out the... to akira at the uh, he just changed the name of his pr- uh, promotion company is pound foolish but now i think he just changed the name to punk rock heartbeat so he brings over okay. american Canadian right bands or wherever not necessarily okay. north american but bands that aren't from japan he takes them around so yeah he's mm-hmm. he took us around so we had somebody like translating and making sure that's awesome we weren't doing anything disrespectful by accident but right canadians yeah. we don't do sure. that too often anyways but <laughs> yeah. you guys you maybe guys, you guys <laughs> yeah, we, we, no no i will guarantee you americans will <laughs> maybe not you guys in particular, but some Americans might. No, no, not maybe not you see this, anybody like, in this cloud chat. Dust coming here comes the Americans. Look out! <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> throwing cheeseburgers. <laughs> throwing cheese. <laughs> a lot of good sushi. Holy cow! Uh, if you guys like sushi, you're talking about how pizza is the best food in the world. So maybe you don't like sushi, but <laughs> <laughs> I love sushi for the record. That yeah, one I'll get over out. pizza. <laughs> yeah, it's friggin' good. I've had there. such thing as sushi pizza. What? I've had a sushi burrito. Thing. I've America. heard of sushi burritos just recently, actually. I haven't tried yeah. it yet. I mean, yeah, we have a burritos. whole ass restaurant dedicated to sushi burritos. This, I, <laughs> this is, you're killing me, Small. <laughs> and I'll take you to a sushi burrito. <laughs> I don't want sushi burrito. I want a regular oh. burrito with nothing but gross, greasy shit in it. I'm Mexican. I, I don't too. care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Josh, where can people find Trash Ambulance? Uh, yeah, we do Instagram. And then it automatically puts it on Facebook. And if I feel like it, I go on and make it more Facebook mm-hmm. friendly. But I don't really like spending a lot of time on Facebook. It's kind of an ugly place, to be honest. But yeah, our stuff's yeah. all on there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, we're on on Twitter or whatever, and then I don't know. I got sick of reporting Nazi accounts that and them saying this doesn't break our safety yeah. precautions. Right. So I, just, I signed out of that. I'm like, ah, I'm done with this. Gone <laughs> gets rid of it. Gets we know all about so, these struggles. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It's just that's also ugly. Like I thought Facebook was bad, but Twitter's kind of overtaken it yeah. lately. And but yeah, we are on there, but there probably won't be anything on there. But Instagram is the best place. And then if you go to uh, thousandislandsrecords.com, like our label, you can buy our stuff if, you, if you're interested in that. Or if you Thousand live Island. in Japan, Costa Rica, or uh, Canada, maybe you can catch us playing a show. Thousand Island. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> that's like if somebody that, that, works, that's where they would go? Thousandislandsrecords.com. Thousand yeah. Okay, very cool. Yeah. I should I probably shout out yeah. to Ozone and I own our own uh, label that Trash Ambulance is not on, but some of our side projects are. It's called High End Denim Records. Oh, so excellent. we do lots of stuff. Awesome. I no, That's fucking great. <laughs> yeah, so we do lots of stuff. Uh, like put out lots of stuff. We're actually going to do a compilation here right away, so there's a scoop for you guys. That'll be oh, dropping sick. pretty soon. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so we just put out bands. Most of them are Canadian, but we just signed our first American band earlier this year called the softer side out of florida if you've never heard of them they're pretty rad Excellent. sounded an israeli band which is dangerous that's interesting <laughs> yeah that's they, a, i don't want to wade into that conversation at all but uh yeah no they're no cool, that's they're cool dudes talk. that's a different talk for another day <laughs> yeah definitely don't want to want to get into that but yeah um yeah, they're called free sergio their music's cool um excellent it was very expensive yeah. to mail their records to them from Canada, by the way. I can imagine. <laughs> or, or I can imagine. <laughs> but they got yeah. them. They didn't get seized or yeah. blown up or anything. So that was good. Excellent. Excellent. But uh, shout out Thousand Island Records. They uh, Same label as our boys in Chaser. So, oh, yeah. I haven't met those yeah, guys we yet, love it. I saw they're they just good people. Yeah, they're really awesome guys. Very good. 
Mike is a good friend of ours. He's been on the show oh, before. Cool. Uh, United Defiance is on there too. I'm really good. And then United Defiance as well. That's another friend of ours. A million other bands. Like so many great bands are on that label. Yeah. Like, you're you're in good company, my friend. <laughs> I would say so. That's why we stick around. They won't kick us out because we were one of the first bands. So. I've said that to them too <laughs> when they're signing Velvet and shit. I'm like, I'm like, you, you guys can like, you know, just kick us to the curb if you want. And they're like, no, yes, you're staying in. I'm like, okay, <laughs> say so. You don't got to tell me twice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they like you, man. Yep. Yeah, okay. and I, I used to write for them. They used to own a blog, and that's how I met them. And right, right. We just, I don't know, no, more no, friends, no. friends than business partners. You know, mm-hmm. not that there's any money in punk rock, but you know. <laughs> I mean. No, I feel that I book punk shows in South Carolina, so I understand. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. You should book the softer but, side. Get them to come. Tell them they need to play shows. Get, they're in my neck of the woods. Well, so definitely need to hold the softer side. They're from Florida, you say? Yeah, uh, Jacksonville. Oh they're, right, oh, they're right down the road. It's only a couple yeah. hours away. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Ask right. them. Sweet. Oh, I'm going to now. You just gave me fuel for, the, for that fire. But, uh, <laughs> Josh, I can't thank you enough for coming on here, man. And bullshit yeah, anytime. For a bit. Excellent. It was fun. Uh, Hopefully, uh, people check us out if they want. Yeah. At least, at sure. least check and out Uncle guys... Packer if you don't check us out. Like, <laughs> Uncle Packer, yeah. Four times. Yeah. Uncle Packer. <laughs> Uncle. That's U N C. But uh Josh, you guys are on Spotify as well, correct? Oh yeah, yeah. Definitely. We're on yeah. there. But all the streaming Spotify, services. All the, all the all the streaming services are excellent. <laughs> and if you, music, you can... if you don't like that stuff and you just want a free C D, just shoot us a DM and we'll probably send you one. If you send us oh, no, that $100 was... for shipping to Tel Aviv. <laughs> <laughs> that was a way to do that. <laughs> like, if you were to are... go. <laughs> CDs are cheap to send. That was a gigantic box of vinyl. So. Right. But uh, once again, man, thank you so much. Everybody, check out Trash Name. Canada's next great punk band. The next Belvedere. I'm calling it right now. <laughs> I like your optimism. No. Hopefully we don't let you down. <laughs> no, no, you guys are already up there, from, in my opinion. So, no, but again, well, we're I'm working just, on yeah. new stuff. So keep your ears peeled. Excellent. Absolutely. Will awesome. do, my friend. Thank you again for yes. coming on, man. Uh, Craig, Jason, Billy Bones, Sunshine, as always. Ready? Go! Peanut butter. Get away. Here it comes. Give me it. Faster. Get out of the way. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. That peanut butter hit my chocolate. Your chocolate hit my peanut butter. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Real milk chocolate, delicious peanut butter. Two great tastes that taste great together. Really? Yeah. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. This is Epcot Center. Epcot Center at Walt Disney World in Florida.